Okay, so on to another round of finding some rates of change. Uh, we're in section 3.4. And uh, again, they're word problem oriented. And so uh, let's get to work. So the first problem says that in 2009, your computer store sells 235 copies of the gaming hit Algebra Blasters. And I know you guys probably had that in your little uh, PlayStation uh, queue, right? Just joking. In 2014, the store was able to sell 1,405 of the copies. So you can sell. It was really a hot item. Find the rate of change in gaming sales. All right. So whoa. Right. So lots of things there. And they didn't even. They just type, say to find the rate of change. Right. Unlike the last two problems, I don't even really know what's changing. So we got to figure that out. Because remember, what a rate of change is. How are two things changing, two quantities changing? So what quantities are changing here? Well, one of the things I can clearly see is the change of copies. All right, so how about we put that up in the upstairs? So the change in copies is one of the things that's changing from one year to the next. And then if you listen real closely, that's the other change in quantity, right? We're starting at 2009 and going to 2014. So what we have basically then is we have a change in copies per change in years right otherwise known as copies per year all right and so there's basically our rate we've identified it we're starting to set up the word problem so what's next well let's go figure this stuff out all right so how do i find the change in copies we started with 235 and we had 1405 more so what was the overall change well, from 235 to 405 well, if you think real closely about it, what we have to do is perform a subtraction, right? We started with this many and ended with this many. So how much change did we have? It's basically the difference between those numbers of copies. All right, how about the change in years? Well, same idea. I think this is a little easier to see, right? We can see it's five, but what we're doing is going from 214 years, right? changing from 2009. Looking ahead, notice in my my subtraction order is very consistent, right? The uh, year 2009 goes with 235. We're subtracting that data from the year 2014 and the number of sales. That's going to be an important idea as we move forward. But we've, we've now have, right, we had to work really hard to find how those two things are changing. We had actually performed some subtractions. So we'll do that, right? Let me do some scratch work over here. So if I take 1405 and subtract 235, we get a zero, carry the one, seven. I'm getting 170, right? So the, oops, there's another one there, 1170. And meanwhile, that's pretty easy, 2014 minus 2009, that's five. So basically over a five year period, there were 1170 change in copies. So what does that come out to? Well, we'll do the long division and we'll figure it out. So five goes into 11 two times, five goes into 17 three times, and then five goes into 24 times. So it looks like 234. 234 what? Copies per year. All right, so you can kind of see I'm still doing my uh, uh, word problem situation, right? We identify the unknowns, right? We set up, in this case, a ratio. It's not really an equation. We start plugging some things in, right? Do our calculation, and then get our units, right? So for this situation, basically it's saying that every year, right, there's a jump in 234 copies of this game. And assuming that rate stays, we can even start calculating how many copies they sold in 2020, let's say, all right? But we won't do that. We're just concentrating on finding the rate of change for a certain situation. So again, identify your rate, find those two changing quantities, do the math, get your units right. So another situation, um, what would be the rate of change if we moved from the point negative two five to the point four three? Hmm, all right, so this one's kind of tougher. There's no, no language, right, telling us what the two changing quantities, we really have to put our thinking caps on. So let's think, right? So for an ordered pair, we have an x and a y value, and we have another x and a y value, right? And so what are the two changing quantities? Well, one of our changing quantities is y, right? When we move from this point to this point, 
we are changing the y coordinate. So there's a change in y going on. So what's the other change in quantity? Well, that would be your change in x. As we go from this x coordinate to this x coordinate, there was a change in the values. All right, and so how do we find how much did y change to? We went from 5 to 3. All right, and so how about I just say 5 to 3. We started out at 5, we moved to 3. So how much did we change? Well, 5 minus 3. Now remember from our example up here, let's be consistent, right? If we're going to take that y value and subtract that y value, then for the x's, we went from negative 2 and we went to 4. So we're going to subtract the, uh, this x coordinate from that x coordinate. And so there's basically how we calculate the changes. 5 take away 3 would give us 2. Negative 2 take away 4 would give us negative 6. Do a ratio there, right? We're talking about negative 1 third. And so what this is basically telling us, right, is that for every time we move over 3 units in the x direction, right, if this was x, we're falling down, right, in the y direction, we're going down 1. And so that's basically what that's saying there. Um, and we'll, we're starting to kind of visualize happening. But again, back to the rate of change, we start by figuring out, well, what are the two changing quantities? Throw them in a ratio. So when we thought about this, when we move from point to point, the two things are changing are the y coordinates and the x coordinates. So there's my rate. And then we have to figure out how they're changing. Well, we went from 5 to 3 and negative 2 to 4. And to show that it doesn't matter, let's say if we wanted to go the other way around, right? So 3 take away 5 divided by 6 minus negative 2. So I literally just took my ordered pairs. I said this y value from that y value and that x value from that x value. If we do the math, upstairs we get a negative 2. Downstairs we get 6 plus 4, or 6 plus 2, which is a negative 2. Oops, what am I? It should be a 4 there, I'm sorry. So negative 2 take away 4 is the same as saying 4 take away negative 2. So this becomes 4 plus 2, which gives us 6. And there's your negative 1 third again. So all you have to do is be consistent, right? Uh, take one y value from the other, and then just make sure you follow along with your x. Either way, we're getting the idea that we drop one unit in the y direction, and we move over three units in the x direction. And there's our rate of change. Uh, this would be unitless because the y and the x ha technically have no meaning. All right, so more later in the next example.